Welcome to LTD Racing. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel and we hope you enjoy the content that you're about to see. LPB GT3 Sprint Series Round 5 Race 1 from Hockenheim Classic. Hi there everyone and welcome back to LPB Racing for the LPB GT3 Sprint Series on Project Cars 2. This is our special event, round five of the season. First race is at Hockenheim Classic. We've got three classic tracks that we're going to do the modern GT3 cars on, so a bit of a, uh, a weird uh, concept, but still, it should be brilliant fun. And we're just going to go through the grid for you now here at Hockenheim Classic. So on pole position then we have Tim in the Porsche. She's back in, as an independent now. Tim in the Porsche. We on pole position. TY, the independent as well, in second place. He's not longer in the team, he's independent now. And he's in the Mercedes AMG, the yellow one there. Woo Woo, first of the team cars. He is in third place with Scott behind. Now they're not teammates. The cars look similar, but they're not teammates. Scott is Bids' new permanent teammate now. So he's in fourth. Blake is in fifth. Uh, he's on his own this time because unfortunately Will couldn't make it. Darren in sixth with Pash in seventh. They're the two teammates there. Neil Farmack in eighth position. And then we've got Bidster in ninth and Nifty Dark Ninja in tenth. So let's get on with the race then. We've got a few little absentees. Tweedy's absent as well and uh, Intrepid also not around. So let's get on with the race then here at Hockenheim Classic. So it's the old Hockenheim with all the straights. And away we go then. Tim gets a good start as we go down towards turn one. And into the first corner we go. Very good. Oh, wide there from Tim, though. Well, a lot of cars, they, are, they can run wide and use that curb on the outside. Everyone through turn one nice and safely then, as now they start drafting down the straights. The Aston Martins should be the fastest on the straights. As you see, Wu there catching up to the back of TY. And really, really uh, catching up to the back of him. He's uh, trying to get alongside Tim as well. As you go down to the first chicane, going to spot your braking marker on the inside and hit the anchors now everyone hitting the anchors now slowing down into the corner Woo Woo goes into the corner a bit wide Tim goes around the inside and round the outside of the next corner is contact as Blake goes round I think Blake's gone round at the chicane as the cameras go funny again Blake's gone round so we've had one casualty already and that's Blake at the back and meanwhile TY from Tim still up the front then it's Woo Woo and Scott then in fourth place so Scott in fourth then we've got Passion Bids a bit further back through the chicane we go up over the curb, up through the chicane, got to be careful. Scott runs a bit, he's always run wide onto the grass, he's held it though. As, oh, Nifty Dark Ninja in the background's uh, off. Uh, sorry, Neil, Neil Farmack's been off as well. So Neil Farmack's been off, uh, unless he hit, tapped Blake round and he's had to wait for him. But uh, Nifty Dark Ninja there in the Cadillac. He's gone for a different choice of car because we've got no, uh, no Growly Bear either. <clears throat> so a few guys missing from this one. And into the chicane we go and out of it. TY still holds the lead from Tim in second place, but Tim is all over the back of him in the Porsche. So Mercedes versus Porsche, because TY didn't use the uh, the Mercedes when he would, because uh, he wasn't uh, in the first round of the season. As, T as Tim moves out to have a look at to overtake, but no way through there. But TY runs very wide there, but he, he just holds on to it. There's Pash, he's on the back of Scott in fourth place, and uh, Pash in fifth. As we've got the corner bids to very sideways in the in the in the. Uh, Aston Martin there. The Aston Martin is not the easiest handling car. It's a very hard car to drive, uh, especially around the tighter sections. It's not too bad when you get up to, to, up to speed, but in, in, with the, the mechanical grip, which is when you've not got any aero assistance, is not the best in this car. But Bids is right behind Pash now as he makes a little error. Pash makes a little error through the last stadium section. And lap one out of nine here at Hockenheim completed. As we go down towards turn one, bids to then behind Pash having a look for a good run out the corner trying to get a good run out the corner, gets the car squared off he's in the draft now, so he's in the draft down towards the, the first chicane quick look to T to TY and he's pulled away from Tim there, so TY's car probably good out of the first corner and here's Bidster on Pash, will he go for the move on the inside he moves to the inside, he's got the inside line, he's going to have to break later watch it on the brakes here Slowing the car down, and oh, he just misses the back of his teammate. He put, was way too wide on the brakes, and Pash goes straight back through. Thank you very much, Bids. I'll take that place back. And Bids is just out breaking himself there, and very close to disaster. Almost takes out his teammate there. So uh, <laughs> that could have ended well, but <laughs> luckily gets away with it, and Bids to then folds in behind Pash again as they go down the straight, down towards the little chicane at the bottom. 
let's watch Scott through here so Scott goes through nice over the curb Bidster and Pash closing up as well Bidster right behind Pash now so Bidster and Pash very close together now as they go down onto the straight Bidster's going to pull out to overtake here and uh, Scott trying to warm his tyres up because the uh, the tyres on this track do get quite cold as you go down the straight so he's just trying to warm up his tyres there he's not trying to weave the block he's just trying to get some heat in the rubber as you go into the chicane Bits on the outside of Pash and he, oh, he holds it around the outside and gets the inside for the next corner. Brilliant move there by Bidster through on the outside, then the inside passing Pash. Good move there, and Pash didn't really have an answer to that because Bidster was just that late on the brakes that he just ended up doing it anyway. Now Bidster's slightly defending the line as he goes down towards the next corner. Pash moves out to the inside line, has a look on the inside now, just folds back in, just doesn't bother to go for the move just yet as you go through the corner, the car's twitching round and uh, nicely through there for everyone meanwhile Tim has took the lead off TY we missed that while well, we've been watching Passion uh, and Bidster we'll get a replay on that at the half distance mark but uh, Tim then takes the lead and Tim the German driver in his home race in his uh, home car as well so using the Porsche around Hockenheim so uh, a good um, a good country mix there and uh, Tim in the Porsche then uh, he's, this is his home track and he's really 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 good around Hockenheim he's uh, He's had some good experience in the in uh, in other leagues around here, apparently, from what we've heard. So uh, Tim should be able to pull away from Ty, but Ty is no mean feat. T Ty will keep on his backside as long as he can, and he will try and apply the pressure. Uh, and he's trying to apply the pressure down towards the chicane, but the Porsche is late on the brakes into the corner. Tim throws the car into the apex, and uh, Ty doesn't have an answer for that just yet. Back to the other guys. It's Scott then with Bidster behind him fifth, he's past Pash uh, as we saw earlier but earlier on and he's up into fifth place, Darren is actually closing up to the back of Pash so Darren is closing on his teammate slowly there so Darren in the green and red Aston Martin there with the red uh, accent he's actually closing up to the back of Pash, there goes Pash in the yellow accent one, there's Darren in the red accent one going through towards the chicane so Bidster then closing up to the back of Scott through the chicane we go, hopping the kerb very risky stuff there from Bidster as Pash hits the curb a bit dodgy there I think he went a bit hit the curb a bit too hard and Darren then his teammate closes up on him as they come up to the next corner meanwhile Bidster's closing up on his teammate what will happen here will Bidster go for a move on Scott Scott warming his tyres up so just trying to um, get some more heat in them because the round here the right hand side tyres almost go completely cold because there's not really much happening to them really there's it's a majority it's right hand corners so the left hand side of the tyres the left hand side tyres actually do get a lot warmer but I think Bids is actually using Scott to pull him up to uh, Woo Woo because Woo Woo is actually being caught here by Scott Bids now does the same and starts warming up his tyres a little bit just to try and get some heat in them so clearly it's a team tactic that they've got to keep the tyres warm as he go out the corner, nice and nice line through there from Bids. Pash is still ahead of Darren. Who Darren's just just fell off the back of Pash a little bit. Martin just had a bit of a moment into the chicane as he goes wide on the ape on the uh, entrance, but then gets the car tucked back in. Neil Farmack is up to eighth place, by the way. Neil Farmack up to up to eighth, and he's pushing. He's done a 211. The rest of the cars in front of him on 212s and 13. So Neil Farmack on the move then. Nifty Dark Ninja's gone backwards in the Cadillac. He's had a few errors in the Cadillac so far, but. Um, uh, in the in the choice influenced by the upcoming two tracks not really a good one for this track but we'll see how it goes Blakeney then in a very battered Aston Martin not having a good race in this one uh, really so he's uh, uh, everyone deciding to go for the Aston Martin because it's got a lot more sort of top end speed it's got like a longer sixth gear so it's uh, it's going to be better for the upcoming tracks that are coming up for a better top end speed and I suppose this track as well but um, the downside for this track is there's a lot of the slow corners are all mechanical grip as Woo goes across the dirt but he has lost time there so he's not gained anything look you see there look Bids is right on him so he's not gained anything so he can keep going will Bids have a go into the next corner Bids is on the inside now no, it's not Bidster, sorry, it's Scott, I beg your pardon. It's Scott, I thought it was Bidster, it's not, it's Scott. I'm sorry guys, it is Scott who wants you going through. Scott goes through and Bidster has to wait behind because he's the, he's the one behind. So Scott the leading the leading the team of Bids Pidwoof because uh, it was um, Intrepid and uh, Bidster before but now it's Scott so with his woof at the end. 
Uh, so yeah, Scott goes through into third place. Good move there by Scott. Taking advantage of Wuru's mistake, but Wuru now back down the in, uh, inside. Or, or either that or he's trying to defend from, from Bidster, but he's trying to look down the inside of Scott here. Wuru and Scott side by side into the chicane. And Scott holds on round the outside and gets to run out the corner. There's all this contact between the two. It's contact between the two cars. And Bidster could come up here and take both if he can, but they're just a little bit of magnet magnetization there. But Scott goes ahead of Wuru then, and Bidster now attacking Wuru. We have a look into the. He's going to have a look into the stadium. On the brakes, into the stadium we go. Bids to go in for the move. We can't. I'm not going to change cameras, guys, because otherwise it will go funny on us. There we go. So uh, Bids to then doesn't get past. Woo holds on, and Scott then looks like he's going to clear these two if he gets on with it. So Scott on the move. Yeah, he's already gone. Scott's already gone. He's got some good pace in this one. So uh, oh, spinner in the background. Spinner in the background. That's Pash. Pash has gone round, there he goes, he's, he's got going again, but Neil Farmax passed him now, so he's gone down to 8th place now, Pash, so he's lost 2 positions there, so unlucky for Pash, looking the, not too bad in this race, and unfortunately now gone da down to 8th place, luckily, Nifty and Blake are uh, quite far behind, so they've not had the, yet more, more damage on the front of that Cadillac now, so uh, definitely been in the wall somewhere, and Blake... Yeah, he's uh, using more grass than tarmac at the moment, so not enjoying that Aston Martin round here. Hopefully the Aston will sort of start to shine at uh, Silverstone Classic coming up and Monza as well, so it uh, should be quite fun. But meanwhile, back to the battle, back to the main battle on track. Scott, woo woo, no! Contact, I think Woo Woo outbreaked himself, hit the back of Scott, and Woo Woo's actually in the tyre wall. Woo Woo's in the tyre oh, he's got going, he's got going, so he's got going, but there was contact there for definite, and uh, I've just realised, guys, we've not got the replays in yet of the first half, so we'll just get that the replays of the first half in now, and that, in that instant just there for you now. Here's the replays of the first half of the race. Okay, here's the first of the replays then, looking at Neil and Blake, so on the brakes here, watch Neil Farmax's car, just goes in a bit too hot, taps the back of Blakeney's car, that causes a bit of a, of a concertina effect, then Neil does pull to one side out the corner, pulls upon the curb and he is going to wait for Blake to actually recover and come back past, so he's been sportsman of it, he just outbreaks himself a little bit and Blake goes through and takes back the ninth place. And now here's an on-board with Bidster on lap two and see how close he was to his teammate when he, when he out, outbreaks himself. Break, break, break. He's trying to slow the car down and oof, just misses the back of Scott's car and Patrick goes, thank you very much. I'll take that back. And now here's a replay of how Tim got past T.Y. So look at the second chicane. Uh, he actually gets a very, very good run through the chicane and actually gets just about alongside him using all the power in that flat six Porsche engine to get alongside the V8 and the Mercedes and into the stadium. They hit the brakes at the same time and Tim just carries the speed through the inside. T.Y. tries to hold on around the outside into the left-hander but it's too late as Tim gets a good run and Tim takes the lead. And here's a replay on lap four of what happened to Pash for him to spin. So watch here, he goes into the corners, carries too much speed, goes wide, catches the grass, and round the back end goes, and he's in the middle of the track now. And Darren and Neil, oh, Neil actually hits him, and back up to the grass. But uh, yeah, we tried to avoid him, but uh, I think he was a bit unsighted there, so lucky for Pash. And just so you know that Neil didn't hit him on purpose, see, this is this is why, so he comes around the corner and all of a sudden, ah, Aston Martin facing the wrong way, and then, oh, there you go, have a little help onto the grass, and Neil continues on, so yeah, definitely not Neil's fault, just couldn't react in time, and uh, it's not every day you see an Aston Martin facing you. And now here's the replay on lap five of what happened to uh, Lou and Scott, so watch you into the breaking zone for the chicane. We go to the chicane, in, onto the brakes, and then look, Woo just too late. Hits the back of Scott and takes himself off into the tyre wall. And then he luckily hits it with a glancing blow to the side, because then he can actually get going very quickly ahead of Darren. So just unlucky that he outbroke himself, but luckily Scott didn't lose the position. And now back to the race. So we come back from the replays then, and Tim has built up a six second, seven second lead almost on TY. That's actually going up quite a lot, so TY must have just recently make, made a mistake there. So TY recently makes a mistake and he's gone right back down because he was like one or two seconds off Tim now and he's now seven, six, six and a half to seven seconds off. So definitely a mistake there from TY. You can see the muck on the car from being on the grass I think. So uh, 
But meanwhile, Scott and Bids are quite close together. So now, will Bids to challenge Scott for position, or will let Scott stay in front? But if he starts making mistakes like that, then then Bids will have to go through. But the two teammates in the white uh, Aston Martins with the black um, Union Jack on the side go through and into th third and fourth. Wu is in fifth, but he's now under attack from Darren, who's actually making quite a good comeback in this race. I think Darren's actually getting quite used to this Aston Martin quite quickly, which is good. Everyone else is struggling with it, but uh, Darren doing quite a good job, and he's probably got the most immaculate car on the field as well because he's not got any damage on the car. As Neil Farmack then comes through behind, he's catching up slowly as well. So into the stadium. Use the camber of the inside on that left-hand corner into the famous... Uh, Hockenheim Stadium, it's not changed much over the years, just had some safety improvements with the grass and a few tyre walls put in, but uh, majority the same as how it's always been really, as we go out of the corner. Neil Farmack still, he's actually really rapidly catching these lot and he'll have a good draft down towards the first chicane as well, on to lap six. And let me just point out the lap times, Tim out from a 208.4, absolutely dominant fashion here from Tim in the uh, in the Porsche 911, absolutely brilliant pace here, and it just shows you the home advantage when you know your home circuit, so Tim then with a 208 out of the bag and everyone else in the 210s, so incredible pace by the Porsche of Tim. Now let's just have a look at him through this, uh, through this chicane and see what he does differently. And uh, not very, just very smooth through there, actually. Very smooth. So smooth is the way to go around Hockenheim. So look at T.Y. In the, in the Mercedes. Uses the inside curb and actually a bit faster through there from T.Y. that time. So he's he's starting to pull the lap times together. Meanwhile, Scott and Bidster are still together. And Bidster looks like he's quite happy to sit behind his teammate for now. So uh, looks like he's got the pace. And... Uh, into the corner we go, use the kerb on the inside and both cars accelerate out the corner. Scott actually pulls away there from Bid, so uh, Scott actually doing very well in this one. Don't know why he should be shocked, he's got, he's, he's got good pace anyway, that uh, Scott. He's uh, quite, the, uh, quite, the, quite the, uh, the man on project cars for the pace. Meanwhile, Woo Woo, Darren and Neil all still roughly the same gap apart, but uh, Woo Woo's not really got much draft from Bidster and Scott, but uh, he's got de Darren's definitely got a draft off the back of Woo Woo's car, so that'll keep him magnetised right to the back of that Aston Martin in front of him. So the, two, so the three Astons together. In fact, it's all Astons together. It's uh, Porsche leading, Mercedes second. Then it's Aston, 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 Aston. <laughs> and then Cadillac and then Aston. So a lot of people are using the Aston Martins because these uh, old tracks are uh, very much very speed friendly. As oh, woo, goes off track. Woo, woo, off track. Gets his power down, tries to recover, and he recovers behind. So then Darren and Will, Darren and Neil move up a position, but Neil Farmack now is right on the back of Darren. So looking for another place here. I should also add as well, as well guys. Sorry, I didn't mention this at first. I should have mentioned this at first. Apologies, but we are also running double points in this one. So um, you, all the drivers have to choose one out of the three races to receive double points in. And in this race, double points are going to Tim and he's leading at the minute, Scott in third place, and TY, so the actual three that have chosen double points are actually in the top three positions for this one, so it looks like they chose wisely for the circuit. So Neil's gone through on Darren as well, Neil's gone through on Darren, so Darren's got made a mistake at the first corner, or Neil's pulled a good move on him, again we'll get a replay on that later on, uh, later on in the race at the end. So Neil Farmack then recovers up to fifth place after having the uh, after the contact with Blake at the start of the race and waiting for him. So through the chicane we go, and Darren goes through Woo Woo there in seventh. He's actually starting to close back up, but he's got to try and get past now. Speaking of getting past, Bidster's still right behind his teammate, and uh, they must have, they must have radio contact, just saying that they're actually gonna they're actually not gonna pass each other. So Scott then goes through the chicane. Bidster happy to stay behind his teammate. And through at the corner we go. So TY's just put in a 208.1. TY puts in the fastest lap of the race so far. So he's actually on the move. He's actually trying to catch Tim. There's Tim ahead. He's actually pulled the gap down from 6.5 to 5.5 now, or just over 5.5. So he's pulled a good, I would say, just over half a second on him. So, but again, he's got to do a lot more than that over the next coming laps. And that mistake earlier really did not help him out. Back to Bidster and Scott and the Aston Martins chasing Aston Martins. It's still Scott ahead of Bidster. Bidster's backed off a bit now, so must have made a little error on the straight. And uh, oh, there we are, just warming the, both cars warming the tyres up there as we go into the next corner, into the right-hander. And power on out the corner, nicely done there from both drivers. Into the stadium now. 
for Neil, Darren and Wuru, and Wuru is catching the back of Darren slowly, he's trying to get there, as Darren runs very wide on the entrance to the corner, but it actually propels him out of the corner, so it's not the worst line in the world doing that, so if you run wide at that, cut at that left hander, you can recover it, which is actually quite a, uh, quite a good thing, as Wuru tries to get up to the back of uh, Darren there. Pash is still back in 8th place, he's on his own a bit now. Nifty Dark Ninja still back in 9th place uh, and in the Cadillac. And then we've got Blakeney. Oh, but there goes Nifty again, just not enjoying the back end of that Cadillac at all. Round he goes and Blake actually might get past him here. Blake actually might be able to get out of last place and he does. There we are. Blake goes through to 9th and Nifty is down in 10th now, reverses back onto the track because there's nothing coming. Finds a gear and gets going, but not enjoying this first race at all. And I'm, I think he's glad he didn't pick double points for this one because <laughs> he wouldn't get many. There's, uh, we now watch Neil Farmer. Can Neil Farmer? Oh, where's Bidster gone? Bidster's had an off. He's off. He's down to eighth place. Bidster's gone round somewhere. We missed that, so we've been watching other things. And Bidster's now all the way down to eighth place. He was right behind his teammate, looking good for a, a three-four, but uh, it's not to be. Bidster's now down in eighth position, and he's now going to try and catch the others back up. So again, we'll get a replay on that at the end. But Bidster then down to eighth place. So was that contact between the teammates? Could it have been just a spin on his own? We'll have to wait until the end to find out. But Bidster goes down to eighth place then, and Pash has now got Bidster right behind him. And look, he's he's angry. He's pushing hard. Two wheels over the curbs. It's madness. So he's uh, definitely seeing the red mist. Bidster, and uh, we'll have to see what he does. But uh, meanwhile, Scott now has. Uh, got a bit more, well, I won't, I'm not going to say a little bit more room behind him, because he's got Neil Farmack closing up, Neil Farmack with the recovery of the race, as we look, the camera goes funny there, we can't see him, there he goes, so Neil Farmack then out the chicane, he's actually closing up and possibly could be in for a podium here, after the uh, contact with Blake at the start of the race, he's recovered all the way up to fourth, so, yep, he's uh, definitely pushing hard, and again, the car's quite immaculate, so, um, yeah, not done bad with his car, he's uh, been very consistent, as we go through the left-hander in the stadium. And Tim is on his last lap. Tim is on his last lap, and it's 6.5 seconds to TY, so he's managed to match TY's pace. They're still lapping in the 209s, which is still a good pace. So there goes the Mercedes of TY with the beautiful V8 sound to it. And then they go down to the chicane. Let's watch Tim through the chicane as we go down through the first one here on the brakes. And using all the curb on the inside. That's the track of the track advantage for you. Let's watch TY, see if he does anything different in the Mercedes. Nope. Curb, a little bit deep for TY, a little bit deep, but it's okay. Gets away with it. Meanwhile, Bids is catching up to the back of Pash now. He's got to really try and get some more positions here, but it's Pash doing very well to keep the gap. And Bids there trying to put trying to close up as well as close as he can. And Neil is behind Scott. And he's actually, Scott's actually pulled a little bit more of a gap on him now. So Scott's put his foot down a bit and managed to pull out the gap on Neil Farmack ever so slightly. As we watch Darren go through the chicane with uh, very uh, too much two wheels there. We just caught a glimpse of as, uh, oh, Pash goes deep into the chicane. Bids to close us up. But again, he's, I'm not sure he's going to have enough time to catch him before the end of the race. We'll have to see. Is he within drafting range now? We'll have to see how it goes. But meanwhile, Neil and Scott through the little chicane. Neil trying to close up. Oh, very much inside curb there from Neil Farmack. Almost lost control. Meanwhile, Bidster and Pash look back into Bidster and Pash. There's Pash going into the corner then, followed by Bidster over the curbs. As Bidster gets on the inside of him, he's trying to look down the inside of Pash. He's down the inside. He's got the car alongside him, side by side on the exit of the long right-hander. And down to the next corner we go. And Bidster's just in front, but Pash is holding on. Side by side we go. Down to the corner. And we're going to hit the brakes. Now, as the car pitches forward on the brakes, bids to then round the outside of Pash into the braking zone and gets the car stopped. But can Pash get him back on the outside? He can. He gets alongside him. He's still alongside him side by side again down the straight. But meanwhile, Tim wins the race. Uh, sorry, bad time on that. But Tim wins the race. Fantastic win for Tim at Hockenheim. His home win. Well done to Tim. TY finishes a good second place, a good recovery for him with it, and with finally internet that works consistently. Good to see him back. Scott then looking like he's going to take a good, well deserved third place here. Third place for Scott with Neil Farmack behind. Scott just needs to survive this last corner. And Neil Farmack then taking fourth, and Scott taking the podium in. So Scott takes the podium in third, Neil fourth, 
Good race by Scott. Podium finish. Darren in fifth. A very good race for Darren. Actually quite an underdog in that race. Woo Woo in sixth place. Well done for Woo Woo. Seventh is going to be Pash. He held off Bidster then. He held off Bidster and Bidster finishes in eighth. He'll not be happy with that after the, uh, uh, the, the well, losing the, the positions down to eighth place. Blakeney, he's got to, well, we've got to see if Blake and Nifty don't make any more mistakes. And they actually finish as they say they are. So Blake then coming around the last left-hander. There's Nifty just coming around the right-hander off the actual, uh, off the classic track. And into the stadium we go, and out the stadium the other side. Blakeney is looking like he's going to take ninth place, just needs to survive these last two corners. And on the power we go. Out of the last corner, and Blakeney is going to take a well deserved, well, well deserved ninth place. A decent recovery after the spin and everything, but ninth place for Blake. And Nifty Dark Ninja unfortunately finishes down in tenth. So we will just get the replays of the second half in for you now, followed by the results. Here's the replays of the second half of the race. Okay, here's a replay of what happened to TY then on lap 5, first of the second half of the race replays and he just goes too fast into the corner and then just loses the rear end as he swaps the directions, the, he just swapped direction too quickly and the back end just couldn't keep up and he lost a bit of control and that's how he ended up 6 seconds behind him. And now here's a replay on lap 7, he's going to start lap 7 at turn 1 and this is how Neil got past Darren. See, Darren goes into the corners, he goes in too early, hits the curb on the inside, loses time, and then Neil just powers around the, out, around the inside of him, and Darren then goes down to sixth place. And now, guys, here's a replay of what happened to Bidster for him to lose his fourth place. We were looking at Nifty Dark Ninja having his spin, but meanwhile, this happened to Bidster. Into turn one we go, into turn one, just loses the back end, has a massive twitch, and then just tries to recover. He's on the grass, and it's just too late. The car's gone round on him, and he lights up the back tyres and then waits for all the rest of the field to go through, and then gets recovered there as he gets going, just gets the car turned around, moves off the racing line to patch and go through, but Bidster then will be living with himself, flames spitting from that Aston, and I would imagine flames spitting from his head as well. That was the replays of the second half, and now we will go to the results. So it is Tim who wins the first race here at Hockenheim, he wins his home race, well done to Tim. It is TY in second place in the Mercedes, good position for him. Scott takes a brilliant podium in third. Neil Farmack takes fourth place with, with Darren in fifth. We've got Woo Woo in sixth place, Pash in seventh. Bidster drops down to eighth after that spin. Then it's Blake in ninth and Nifty Dark Ninja rounds off the ten finishers. He had a two second penalty but that will not take effect. And as you come back from that then, your winner is Tim in the Porsche. There's the Porsche with TY behind in the yellow Mercedes. Well done to Tim. A home victory at Hockenheim for him. And uh, double points as well for the top three because it is uh, they've chosen double points for this race. So Tim actually gets... Uh, 40 points for the win rather than 20 so uh, brilliant job by up by them and well done to Tim and we will see you guys next time for race 2 of this uh, special event which will be at Silverstone Classic we'll see you for that one guys take care thank you for watching the first race of our special event here at Hockenheim Classic hope you all enjoyed that one don't forget to like and subscribe to LPB Racing as well and next time everyone it's going to be race 2 of the round 5 special event from Silverstone Classic We'll see you in Britain. Take care.